Hi there guys, welcome to the Dutch YouTube channel, thank you very much for tuning in on this short video about this Gap RC Tiny Radio in its uh, ILRS version. So uh, you've seen the title of the video, right? In this video I'm going to show you how to flash firmware onto this radio. Now Gap RC actually has a tool to flash firmware, new firmware onto this radio and that works makes it very simple, especially if you're new to ELRS or flashing firmware to, uh, onto anything. However, that way you don't have control over all options of ELRS. For instance, you can't set a binding phrase or your Wi-Fi settings. So again, it is a very easy way to update the firmware on your radio, but you don't have full control. In this video I'm going to show you how to flash firmware onto this radio with the ELRS configurator, so that you do have full control over the settings of this radio. Here we go! Are you serious? Okay, so you already notice I have this laptop here, right? Or pad, it's a Windows 11 uh, computer, really. And we're gonna use that, only that, not even a cable, to uh, flash the firmware onto this radio. You could potentially use a USB cable, but you don't need to. So the first thing we wanna do is uh, create a firmware for our radio, or configure a firmware if you want. So we'll do that in the ELRS configurator. Let's have a look. Alright, here we start the ELRS configurator, here we go. In the ELRS configurator, you, uh, in case you're not familiar with this program by the way, I'll have a link in the description down below to another video of mine about ELRS, which is more a basic how-to or what is ELRS and such. It also shows you how to uh, flash firmware onto a module, but again, it's more of a beginner's step into this, for instance, ELRS configurator. So uh, in this configurator you need to select the device you want to create a firmware for. So in this case that's our radio. Now you might think, well okay, so I select a Gap RC, Gap RC. And sure enough Gap RC does show up, as you can tell. They have 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz devices apparently. But if I select that 2.4 GHz, I only wind up with a receiver, a 2400 uh, sorry, RX a receiver, RX. So that's not what we need. In fact, the, for this Gap RC radio, we need to use a do-it-yourself, a general purpose firmware. In the future that might be different. Maybe in the future Gap RC will have their own a firmware in this uh, configurator for the radio as well. At this point in time you don't. So if you have already tried to create a firmware with a configurator, you will have, uh, well, found that you couldn't find the radio. However, you select DIY, do it yourself, and then 2.4 gigahertz. Then device option you select the DIY 2400 TX ESP32 SX2880 E28 and don't worry I'll put that entire string that combination of letters in the description of this video so you can easily find it so but I will simply select that here hard check day now um, with the ELS configurator you can directly flash the firmware onto your radio, for instance over USB. I've tried that, I could not get that to work somehow. I don't know why. Uh, the ELS configurator will see your radio if you hook it up to the USB port. I couldn't get it to flash. It always failed and I don't know why. It uh, doesn't really matter, I'll show you how to do it anyway, without a cable. So uh, it doesn't really matter what I select over here, UART or Wi-Fi. Uh, I won't be flashing the firmware directly from the configurator, as I'll show you in a minute. So we also don't uh, need to download a Lua script, as the radio doesn't need or use Lua script. So that's uh, a win, I guess. And let me see, I will select uh, the 2400 uh, ESM um, and not a USM, you could, 
uh, is up to you. Okay, the binding phrase. I, uh, well, you can't see my binding phrase, but you can and you will need to uh, set up a binding phrase. That way, if you flash uh, your radio with uh, one, a certain binding phrase, test one, two, three, four, five, for instance, right? And your receivers with the same binding phrase, they will all automatically be bound. You don't need to uh, press a binding uh, button or anything. Again, if you set for the radio the binding phrase to be the same as for your receivers, things will automatically be bound, which is the strength, which is actually why we're flashing the firmware with this configurator. Okay, there's a lot of other options. I will, let me see, I will also set up my home Wi-Fi and my home Wi-Fi password, and they are dotted as you can see it here, but you will enter your own home uh, Wi-Fi entry point or access point sorry and the password that way your radio will be able to directly connect to your home wifi which is beneficial for instance um, if you want to access your radio from another computer that uh, maybe doesn't have wifi or if you want to use their, your gap c radio as a simulator uh, controller over wifi so we do that then um, we have two options at the bottom over here, build or build and flash. Now again, um, build and flash didn't work uh, in my case. So I will we'll simply build, and this will take a while. So I'll get back to you, uh, in, well, in a second for you, for me in a couple of minutes. But again, this building of the firmware will take a while. Don't worry, in a couple of minutes you'll be done. And what do you know, we are ready. Well, the computer is ready. And um, as you will have seen, uh, the computer also opens up uh, the Explorer in a window with the firmware that's created, that, that it has created. Actually, it creates two files. I'm not completely sure, but you need the first one of those two. Not the firmware.bin, but, well, the do-it-yourself 2400, etc., etc., firmware. Now, it will make sense for you to move that firmware to a location uh, where you can easily find it because it's now down into a directory structure. So I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, um, cut, cut, I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna move to, let's uh, see, to my temp directory and paste it over there, there. Now I can easily find that uh, that uh, bin file, our firmware. So now we're going to make our radio uh, ready to receive the firmware. Let's see uh, what that looks like. So guys, if you have a look at the back of our gap C radio, you will see that it has two buttons over here. It has a setup button and a bind button. Now you'll have to hold on to that setup button or keep it pressed, if you will. And it's actually wrong in uh, Gepperc's manual, so uh, this uh, video will help you out in that sense as well. So hold on to that setup button, keep it pressed. Then also hold on to that power button until you see the status LED flicker. And you will already see it flicker, right? So just uh, like a second or so. Uh, keep them pr both pressed and that's it. Now your radio is ready to be flashed. It's actually in Wi-Fi mode. So we'll switch back to our laptop now. Okay, and we'll now have a look for that Wi-Fi access point. Our radio is now basically a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi access point. So let's have a look if we actually see it. And what do you know? We do Express LRS, there it is. So we click on it. And um, I'm not completely sure actually now what the Wi-Fi password is, but I'll put it down in the description of this video as well. And after it has connected, you will be presented with this page, which is, well, a page that our radio um, presents to us. And uh, very simple uh, is this, okay, it says Bestand kiezen over here, yeah, that's Dutch. Uh, in your screen it'll say, well, probably in your language, uh, select file. So we go and select a file over here. And what do you know, we've put it in uh, our temp folder, right? So c.up 
TEMP, enter, and there is our firmware. Double click, there we go. That's our firmware selected over here. And then we hit update. And I won't be uh, pressing update now as I've already updated my radio. And it'll only take like, a, well, actually, why don't I write uh, update? There we go. It'll only take a couple of seconds, really. Pretty fast, that's nice. And let's see if it uh, finishes and is successful. That would be really nice. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Uploaded, uploaded, 100% uploaded. Now it's actually implementing, if you will, the firmware onto the radio and update succeeded. Very, very nice. Now I will have to say that uh, it took me a couple of tries the first time. Probably because the firmware on the radio was kind of old in some way. Still, uh, the third try it, it succeeded, just like you see it here. So, if it fails on your end, simply retry it in a couple of tries, you'll get there. And it only takes a couple of seconds. So, um, yeah. And that's it. Now, your radio will bind to any of your quadcopters that has the same binding phrase that you entered when uh, on creating that firmware. And it's pretty simple, right? You can use any laptop or pad or even your phone to uh, upload the firmware onto your radio. And that's it. You will have to power cycle, so switch it, uh, off your radio and switch it back on. But that's it. That's flashing the firmware onto your CAPRC Tiny radio. Yeah, so hopefully this video helped you out. It uh, would have helped <laughs> me out. Yeah, it took some uh, searching what firmware to use, but now you know. It shouldn't uh, take you more than a couple of minutes to uh, update the firmware on your KPRC radio. And if you uh, are left with questions anyway, put them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer you or maybe other users will uh, be able to help you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.